don't understand. And then there's, a, there's something sugar coat here now. Then let me explain it to you so you understand. Basically, um, you got so you had Dylan and you had me, and the whole idea was the winner between me and Dylan fights AJ in Wembley. Yeah, and then when Dylan won to do the deal, Dylan didn't want the deal. He decided to fight somebody else, and then AJ they had so that the whole production. They had to scrap the whole production. They put so much money in the whole production, hiring Wembley, getting the promo ready done, you know, getting everything done, and everything got scrapped. And now they have to reset now. Where are we going to get another venue? They went to New York. Hey, they went to New York. Who is he going to fight? The other guy fell with the drug test. Who's going to fight? They found the Mexican. The Mexican came. You know, everything is everything is all messed up here. Yeah? And this is all to do with Dylan. Let's all let's all let's all remember here. Yeah? And then. AJ lost. Guess who the blame is on now? The blame is on Dylan. If Dylan is taking that fight, you know, the fight would have happened in London. This sort of guy is pissed. Yeah. The zone is pissed. Yeah. AJ is pissed. You know, Eddie and is pissed. You know, they're all pissed off with Dylan. Yeah. The WBC, you know, the, 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 the WBC, the IBF, they're all pissed off with this guy because he didn't play ball by fighting AJ in Wembley. Yeah. And they're like, you know what, we're gonna sort that guy out. Oh yeah? Done. Guess what? The rematch happened with uh, Ruiz in Saudi. But now everybody's not pissed with Dylan anymore because there's so much money in there now. They forgot about Dylan in the background now. Well, you know, uh, they don't care anymore. Guess where Dylan is now? That fight with Tyson Fury now, with Dylan, with, with the Antwater. But Dylan is still in the background. He's still fighting everybody in the back, but him to get him to get his shot at the title because he didn't play ball. He didn't take the fight he was supposed to take, which the agreement we had when this fight was happening, me and him. The agreement was the winner fights AJ. That was the agreement. When they got to the table, Dylan said, "Nah, it's a bad deal. I don't want that deal, so I'm going to fight AJ." And they're like, "We're doing it. What are we gonna do?" So I think they're punished. Okay. Those are the words and the theory of Derek Chisora. And Derek Chisora gave us a trip down memory lane and explained what he felt happened with Dillian White and why Dillian White is getting such a shitty end of the stick when it comes to the WBC um, and other possible fights. Okay. Derek Chisora and Dillian White, I always wondered why was that fight so pushed? I know it was a British fight. I know these guys fought before. I know it was a it was a tough, drawn-out fight. Um, very nasty promotions, because both of these guys really hated each other from Derek Chisora point, you know, dashing water in his face, throwing a chair at him, you know, and the result of that, they had one hell of a 12-round fight. I get it. But then the winner of that was Dillian White. Dillian White was on top. He had one loss, and that was to AJ, which was on top of the world, an undefeated younger fighter that sold out Wembley, right? Two times, okay? Then you had Dillian White after knocking out Chisora. Remember, AJ was there, so Derek Chisora is on to something, Okay. They were scouting that fight. Anthony Joshua was there. He he his reason was because he was supporting Derek Chisora because they grew up in the same place. Okay, well, I think that was another reason. Whoever was going to fight, whoever was going to um, win, was going to be was going to be in the seat to fight Joshua in Wembley because remember that April twenty eighth Wembley date of last year was already set, okay? It was set right along with the Alexander Povetkin deal, okay, fight. So they were both set in the same time, at the same time, okay? So two dates, same time, was already uh, set in stone. So we thought, well, Derek Chisor did not want that deal. And at the time, it was a shit deal. It was. It wasn't a very good deal. Um, it was, if... AJ lost to uh, Dillian White. 
Dillian White wouldn't get the lion's share of the money on the next fight, him being champion. Okay, now, that for that reason, they decided to go to New York. Okay, so, you know, of course, Jarrell Miller and all that. But, <laughs> this shows you that, like Derek Chisora said, he should have took that deal. And I've said that in my live stream, that, I think Dillian White, knowing what we know now, should have taken that deal. Why? Because Dillian White could very well have been the guy or been in a position where Andy Ruiz was. He could have beat Anthony Joshua last year. He could have beat Anthony Joshua. It wouldn't have really mattered simply because Eddie Hearn, from that standpoint, well, these guys have already fought. Derek Chisor beat him in the amateurs. Anthony Joshua knocked him out in the first fight. Dillian White in the rematch beats AJ. Okay, now it's time for a trilogy fight, winner take all. Well, in the winner take all, Dillian White in, in exchange could have asked for more money. Think about it. What did Andy Ruiz do? Andy Ruiz demanded more money and got more money. Okay. And, and it didn't matter on the deal that he signed. Uncle Al got him more money, so it was nine million. I think he was guaranteed nine million. I think it was nine turned into thirteen, so he was able to uh, increase his money by a great deal. Okay, and so could Dillian White at the time. Like uh, Derek Chisor said, you have to beat Anthony Joshua, then you know establish your claim as the top guy. Then you can demand more money. So for that reason, Derek Chisor felt and feels that he's being punished. Now, I think, here's my counterpunch to this. I think he should have taken the deal knowing what we know, but I don't think Eddie Hearn is intentionally punishing uh, Dillian White. I don't think that. I think what's happening is he's being punished because of, um, from the WBC with Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury gets a pass because Tyson Fury... Um, beat Klitschko, okay, so he had, he was the lineal champ, because he's the man that beat the man, and he got an opportunity to fight Deontay Wilder and all that, right, okay, well, um, Tyson Fury basically took Dillian White's spot, okay, as far as where he's supposed to be, and the position that Dillian White's supposed to be in, if, if this was a fair world, but it's not, okay, Tyson Fury took that slot, Tyson Fury beat Deontay Wilder. So where does that leave Dillian White? Where he always was. Behind the scenes, waiting, wanting, you know. Um, but of course, Dillian White is on the redemption list. Not because he didn't take the AJ fight. It's because he wasn't in shape to take the AJ fight anyway. He wasn't in no type of shape. He was already overweight and that was his claim. That was his first thing. Hey, I'm not I'm not in shape. Why are they picking this fight? He knew about that date. Dillian White knew about the 28th of April. So when he knocked out Chisora, he knew, hey, come in shape. So if what Derek Chisora is saying is true, that means Dillian White wasn't even prepared for his own um, opportunity. Okay? So he took that for granted. You know, and he came over here, and I guess you got a, part, a, a, a dose of this American food and got fat because he didn't do anything else um, after he knocked out your sore. Sure, you, you ended the feud. Okay, the saga's over. You win. Cool. But you come over here. You supposed to, you're supposed to be scouting other people. You know, you get an earful of the American politics on what, you know, is going on in boxing. But in the meantime, you get fat. Then you go back to the U.K., sit down at the table, claim that you're not ready on top of that, refuse the deal because it's a shit deal. I believed it was a shit deal. But knowing what we know now, it was the best opportunity for him. He was not going to get that dealing with Dillian White with the WBC. Mauricio Suleiman was only going to cater whoever is in charge of the WBC. So if they're not matchroom fighters, so be it. He's not going to be a matchroom supporter. He's going to be whatever supporter of whatever promotional company of the person that has the belt. And at that time, Deontay Wilder has the belt, and that's who it was. And that's who he supported. Okay, so 
with Dillian White, maybe he is being punished, but I don't think that he's being punished by Matchroom. Now, I will say this. He's not the number one guy at Matchroom, so it's hard for us to really, and it's hard for Dillian to really get the support that he needs, okay? And then here's another thing. If Dillian White was a PBC fighter, look at it this way, guys. If he would have signed with PBC at the time and beat AJ, okay, would he have got a better deal than Andy Ruiz did? Or would he have got an increase anyway besides the contract that he was in? You know, because if they wanted him to play ball because he was signed with Matchroom, fighting AJ again, would he have got that increase? That's the question you ask yourself. A lot of people would doubt that. But in the grand scheme of things, he is being punished. <laughs> so I 50% 50, 50, uh, 50 agree with uh, Derek Chisor. It's a very interesting um, theory. You guys tell me what you think about Derek Chisora's comments. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys have been Counterpunch. Peace.